What happened? He got oh, hit. Shit. He got shot. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Wake up. What's your name? What's your name? Shit. Money! As you've seen throughout the month, it has been the unplanned and the unannounced, which has been the fulcrum of every milestone in the Occupy movement. Saturday night, as a piece of tape we played earlier showed, when police clashed with protesters in Times Square, an American veteran of the war in Iraq stood up for the people behind the barricades. I'm hurting people that I, I fought to protect. There's no reason for this. There's no, there's no honor to hurt an unarmed civilian, and I won't let it happen. Sergeant Shamar Thomas is a Marine veteran, served two tours in Iraq, took part in, Belu in Fallujah in the second battle. Comes from a military family. Both his parents are veterans. His father served in Afghanistan, his mother in Iraq. It's an honor to have you here, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Why would you go to Times Square Saturday night, particularly wearing your medals and your uniform? Um, I initially went to the protest on October 5th, and I saw the police uh, brutality. And uh, it made me want to get involved even more to, you know, the, the understanding that, you know, we have young men and women out here who are trying to inspire, you know, change. And so why wouldn't I want to be a part of that? Protesters didn't know what to do because obviously you were hitting a chord with these people. What were you trying to say? And obviously we have the quotes, we have the tape, we played it. But what was in your mind as you were, you know, expressing yourself in that vocal manner? Well, I've been to Iraq twice. I've been in, um, I was in a riot in Rupa, Iraq in 2004 where we had uh, rocks thrown at us. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the, after the rocks were thrown, we didn't go beating up people and arresting people, you know what I mean? We, we kind of treated it with a, with a level of humility, you know what right. I mean? And to have the cops beating, I saw, you know, a cop punching a woman in the face, you know, to see that in my own country, you know, my family fought for this country for people to have a right, and these people are, are peaceful. I haven't, I haven't seen a video yet where I've seen right. them try to hurt the cops. So why are they using batons and sticks? Why are they in riot gear when nobody's trying to riot, you know? Did you have a sense at the time that they were listening to you? Oh, I, I know for sure they were listening yeah. to me. I, I have no, no doubt in my mind that they were listening to me. It, I, had the, I had the fire in my gut, you know, yep. so to speak. Like, uh, they, they knew what I meant. You know, I, I've, I've been to, you know, on, on over 50 combat missions, so... The intensity is there. They know that I'm telling the truth. You know, they, they know in their hearts what, you know, what I'm saying is right. And it seemed like you were a, 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 a cold bucket of water against their sort of fevered, what's going to happen now exactly. thing. Because you've actually been in the real thing where it was life and death and this exactly. was not it. And that was what you were trying to get to them? It, it's, it's a time and place for things. You know, it wasn't when the situation arises where the, the, you know, the crowd starts getting frantic, that's mm -hmm. when it's time to say, you know what, the crowd is getting frantic. When people are just shouting, you know, uh, we are the 99 percent, come right. join us, right. these are not, you know, uh, uh, chants that incite violence, you know what I mean? So why, you know, the, the riot police were in, you know, in form, just walking, marching up and down the street like, you know, like it was a battle going on. And I, 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 I've been in battle. Right. It was no battle going on. Right. You know? The other side did, not only didn't have weapons of any kind, they didn't have the rocks yet. They're not no even, rocks. There's no stage at that point. Give me your assessment of the messages that are coming from Occupy Wall Street, and are you in favor of them, opposing the corporate greed and holding the banks accountable and, and supporting the middle class, principally those three? Um, I, I support everybody's view. I'm a, I tell people all the time that I, I'm not a part of any political mm -hmm. party. I'm not a part of any... Uh, group or anything like that. I'm an American citizen. Okay, so that, then what does this mean to you? What this means to me is that this is our time in our generation to change the the, the greed that is in America. Like uh, my both of my parents uh, did 20 uh, 20 plus years in the military, and they have to find jobs now. Mm -hmm. And it's like I, I recruited for the Marines for four months, and it's like I, I taught kids to come join the Marines. So it's like, come join the Marines, and then what are you going to do after you get out of the Marines? You know what I mean? So it's like, we don't, there's, there's no, you know, there's no place for us to go now. You know what I'm saying? So is there a place, do you think, in Occupy, in the entire movement, in the protest movement that's beginning in this country for veterans' rights, and particularly recent veterans' rights to be addressed? Should there be some more attention paid to this fact? Well, that, that's, the, that's the whole thing with the uniform. Sure. That, that's what I, I tell people, like, you know, I, I want to inspire the veterans to come out because a lot of veterans have this thing where they don't want to speak against the government. They're so, you know, trained, like, oh, no, if I speak, I, you know, speaking against the government is wrong, you know what I mean? Because we have a chain of command, you know? 
But uh, yeah. I don't think it's I don't think it's yeah. about a chain of command. It's about a way of life. You know, you understand what I'm saying? So chain of command goes both ways. <laughs> Sergeant Shamar Thomas, U.S. Marine Corps, whose mother, father, grandfather, and great grandfather also served this country through Iraq and Afghanistan and Vietnam, and World War II. Yes. Great thanks to you for your service, to them for their service, and uh, spectacular work on Saturday night. Thank you, and thanks for coming in here. To the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces, we are anonymous. We would like to remind you of Operation Iraqi Freedom. The purpose of Operation Iraqi Freedom was to remove all weapons of mass destruction, as well as to secure a better democracy for the citizens of Iraq. In the process of securing that democracy, it meant the protection of Iraqi citizens from an unjust government, until the political regime changed for a better democracy. Now if we may direct your attention to the homeland, there's a new enemy to the United States Constitution. This enemy is the current United States President. The President has passed a bill that practically destroys the United States Constitution. The name of this bill is called the National Defense Authorization Act. The provisions in this bill will allow federal personnel to indefinitely detain any American citizen that the government sees fit. The National Defense Authorization Act will allow any U.S. citizen under suspicion only to be detained with no verifiable proof. Most critical are sections 1031 and 1032. Section 1031 states that all persons accused do not get a trial, American citizen or not. You as the men and women of the United States Armed Forces took an oath to uphold the United States Constitution, and to defend it at all costs. Do not allow this injustice upon the Constitution proposed by the President, or orders from your superiors to hinder your judgment as human beings or to seek the facts and evidence to support terrorist activity. The government is already classifying protesting as low-level terrorism. Do not follow suit. The protesters are exercising their First Amendment rights to petition the government for a positive change. Not only did the government take away the people's rights but your rights as well. Before you are Marines, Army Rangers, Navy crewmen, or fighter pilots, you are citizens first. The First Amendment in the Constitution gives United States citizens the right to freedom of speech, religion, press, and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. The United States Constitution has worked flawlessly for the last 220 years. It is not the President's decision to change the Constitution whenever he sees fit. The Constitution was written by the founders of the United States. It is not the President's decision to make the United States a war zone and to enforce a nationwide police state. He is not the supreme ruler. He led the country to believe that hope would bring change for a better tomorrow. So far the only change has been a dictatorship that allows the brutal beatings of unarmed citizens, pepper spray to the faces of the elderly, and feet to the stomachs of pregnant women, as well as a bullet to the face of a military veteran named Scott Olson, from Oakland, California in hopes to silence a revolution that refuses to be silenced. This is America, the land of the free. We will not be silenced. We will not go quietly. You go to foreign countries to protect the citizens from dictatorship and unjust laws. Now it's time to protect the citizens of your own nation as the United States government is now inflicting fear on its own people. Your allegiance is to the people of the United States, not to the people that control the government. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive political injustice. We do not forget political dictatorship. To the United States government, expect us.